I am Mike Fallick from Things and Stuff. And Alan, talking about movies, they may be best friends, but they always disagree. Mike Fallick from Things and Stuff. And Alan, I see that. <laughs> and so, let's see, this is our fourth podcast together, fifth podcast together? I think technically fifth. Yeah. Because I believe both times we've met, we've done two. Two at the same time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. The oh, I don't know. Jurassic World, uh, Family Guy. Futurama. Futurama. Family Guy. Future, Family Guy, Futurama, Jurassic World, and something with that. Yeah, there are two other ones. But, uh, yeah, today, right. today we're talking about Doubt. Yeah. 2008. I, I love this movie. I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> well, I mean, so you tweeted that, and I was like, well, well, I'll say my interpretation of what I thought you meant first. Sure. Doubt, if you don't know, is a film about um, a two nuns in a Catholic church school. Yeah. Um, and uh, they are dealing with a black student, the only black student in the school, uh, possibly being molested, and in some way there is a mystery around it. Yes. What I interpreted the uncomfortability of is that I think sometimes, this is gonna sound tangential, people, but stay with me. Please do not, do not call for the, for the flight attendant. We are in turbulence. Wait till we land. Um, it, <laughs> even through that analogy, I'm asking you to hold on, or is a metaphor. <laughs> it was a metaphor. So, uh, it, it Horror genres yes. do not really get the wide coverage that they always get because, in my opinion, what horror is about is like is tension, yes. right? Uh-huh. Is is tension in the tension in the, the the realm of danger? That's like that's maybe not what the genre is defined by. Like the genre is probably defined by you know what you're. I think I even defined it on the show before. It's what's the worst possible thing that could ever happen? Yeah, the most the most what is the most terrifying thing that could ever happen? And in this movie, although it's about nuns and, and things like that, if you look at tension, and if you look at what they're playing with, it's a horror movie by every stretch of the imagination. Like it, it is all about what is the what is the monster waiting around the corner for for our protagonist. That's what I thought you meant by you were uncomfortable. Was yes. I right or am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I was so like anxious and like, oh, where is this going? Where is this going? The entire time. And so to spoil it, it does not, it does not pay off that emotional stress that I had the entire time. No, no. Which, which I was talking about, um, if you ever read a lot of sci-fi, uh, horror comic books, which I know sounds really specific, (laughs) but it is a pretty big, it is a very big brand. Heavy metal magazine is like the number one uh, purveyor of it. But in those, uh, the hero always dies. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing of the genre is like the hero gets killed. The monster wins. That's how, that's how like sci- sci-fi horror and comic books work. Is that like there's a monster, someone tries to defeat it. They just get gobbled up. And I think this goes closer to that than it does like regular horror where our protagonists usually win and or get away. Um, I think this is more like you're left saying at the end, well, I guess we're spoiling this. Yeah, um, that's fine. Uh, and it won't be, nothing will be ruined. At the end, you just don't find out whether any of this happened. Yeah. You just, just, they don't tell you. And, and so it's more. Sorry. Uh, so this is based off of a stage play. And I feel like yeah. that, that element fits better on stage than it does on screen. And, and I don't know why. I don't know. I think, I think there's been a, a lot of plays that, uh, I've really enjoyed in terms of, you know, some of my favorite movies are, are plays. Um, in Bruges is, is a, is not my favorite, but that's a pretty, that's a pretty big one that people know. I mean, uh, A Streetcar Named Desire. These, these were all plays, but, but beforehand, but I, I, it didn't, I, I sometimes watch, or, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. That was another famous play. And then, and then a movie. That's one of my favorites. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, I could see how it worked as a play, but I didn't get that sense that like, oh, this should be a play as opposed to oh, a, I just, a movie. I just mean the, um, so the, the ending for this, for me at least, was kind of unsatisfying, right? So, 
the the basic story is the nun, the new nun. So that there's three characters. You have uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, who is the priest. The priest. Um, oh, I just had her name. The who was the head nun? Uh, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. And Amy Adams. Amy Adams is the new one. The young so, nun. Amy Adams sees something suspicious with the priest, and the boy tells Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep goes on a crusade to find out what happened. But I guess that's not even true. She goes on a crusade to get rid of the priest. She's convinced from the beginning that he's doing something wrong and needs to take him out. Yeah. And and, and it, it's it's pretty – what I mean about tension and playing with tension is like she flips so quick in this movie. Like I kind of forgot how quickly she's just like I, – like. I thought it, I, I remember it more being like, she investigates and she looks around and then she's trying, but she, I forgot how many times like, she outright is like, it, it's very unmovie like in that way, I'll say. Yeah. That like, she right away is like, no, this guy did it and you would expect in a crappy movie, like, people to be like, he did it, now it's time to take him down. But like, it's more about her failing continually at this conviction the entire time. Yeah. Yeah, because so Amy Adams comes to Meryl Streep and I was like, hey, I saw something weird. You know, I need to talk to you. And she's like, it happened. I knew it was going to happen. And it was like that that was it. Just just Amy Adams saying, hey, I saw something kind of strange. She was convinced that the priest is a pedophile. Yeah. And I actually watched an interview, uh, uh, most of it before before um, I just didn't have time to finish it. But um with the writer of the play hmm. and he he said that it's not about that that moment is more what it's about that it's like no he didn't cite that moment but those types of moments where yeah. he was saying it's not about priests and things like that that he listed the iraq war as more of an inspiration for uh this movie he, he was saying he was on charlie rose and he was saying that um it was more that people who had convict people weren't like just talking to each other. They had convictions and they were, you know, just saying their convictions at, at each other and not really like talking about the issues. And, and the people that had doubt were sort of looked as, as, you know, stupid. Uh-huh. And, and uh, on both ends, like that, who is convinced and who has doubts flips all the time in the movie. And of course you, uh, you learn towards the end that like you should have, you shouldn't be, and this is going off what the filmmaker said, you know, you should question things uh, and that convictions oftentimes might make things worse because I don't know about you, but I was pretty convinced that the priest was a pedophile too, but like Meryl Streep plays her cards so hard that he kind of gets away with it a few more times because it's a ridiculous claim if she has no proof. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought, I thought that Meryl Streep was wrong. For 80% of the movie. I thought that's Me where too. it was going. And then the very end, it's like, oh no, he definitely did it. But then she, she flips and is like, you know, I, I don't know if I did the right thing. You know, I have a lot of doubts about what I did. And it was just yeah, like. Yeah, the last, the last line, a little heavy handed. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it like. The, so for me, going through all that, I, I really enjoy dramas. I enjoy suspense and like, I was really invested into this movie. And to, for me, the only ending that would be appropriate is either Mer- Meryl Streep is wrong, clearly, and has to pay for accusing someone of being a pedophile, or he is a pedophile and he really has to pay for the amount of emotional stress that I went through watching it to get to the end and being like, I don't know. Maybe something. But happened. that's exactly what um, I think his name is Shanley, the the writer of it. Yeah. Um, that's exactly what he didn't want to do, though. His whole point was like, especially if you look at conflicts like, uh, you know, the Iraq War mm. is is a, is is something where if you're writing about that at the time, which you know he wrote it in 2003, and it was first done on Broadway in 2004 and five. Yeah. Um. So. That was heavy into the Iraq war. It was just post 9-11. Like, that's, that's the talk of, of, you know, debating things. It's not a simple war to talk about. Yeah. I think that a lot of times, 
people are used to with conflicts like it is black and white, you know, Nazis. That's why a lot of people will talk about Nazis because it's so easy to be like, yeah, Nazis are shitty. Like, not that that's, not that you should be ashamed for knowing Nazis are shitty. They definitely are <laughs> shitty. But, but like, it's not, it's not the entire breadth of, of mankind's weirdness and horribleness. And so, especially the Iraq war, like not everything was right about it. Not everything was wrong. Like it was not a cut and dry issue. And so to be like, the pedophile has been defeated. Find out what the super friends do next week. <laughs> yeah. ba-da, 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 ba-da. Like that's not, that's not this conflict. That wasn't the world at the time that like, I think you're supposed to be uncomfortable a little bit. Yeah, no, I know. I, but I think my issue is pedophile or pedophilia is such a uh, a big issue that if you don't land it, right? Like if you play with that in your movie and you don't land it, then it's just like, ah, that really wasn't worth all the investment I put into it. Well, but but then again that that's the same way too that we talk about the the these again not sympathizing with pedophiles, <laughs> but you know, there are certain a lot more times these things are 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 more nuanced than you think, you know, not to say that, that pedophilia is, is ever right. It's never right, but victims coming forward is a difficult issue and, and actually investigating and proving these things is, is not really a cut and dry thing. And, uh, you know, for as, for every, you know, time that there's a great era of people coming forward and being open and wanting to improve adult child relations, there's also like, a bunch of years where uh, therapists did, if you know, um, recall therapy. That was a a huge hoax, and a lot of people went to jail over a type of therapy that didn't really work and was having people recall memories that that never happened uh, because that was what the the, the therapist was uh, uh, prodding for. You know, they yeah. weren't actually what they weren't just. What happened with this movement was it wasn't people in therapy, and then they realized like. Oh my gosh, I, 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 you know, I just haven't been able to talk about that for so many years. They would do these, uh, um, oh, what was, they would do these like hypnotherapy things and they would be kind of pushing for like, you're, you're remembering something like you, you remember this. What's the thing you've forgotten, even though they hadn't forgotten anything. So people would respond to this natural thing and say, you know, oh yeah, I, I remember this, this person did this horrible thing. What was the horrible thing? And they kind of made it up. So for every, it's it's not as cut and dry. I think when you're saying like you're going to play with pedophilia, I actually find it worse the other way where everyone makes it seem like it's a simple issue because if you've ever talked to someone who's a victim of sexual abuse, it's far from simple. It's far, it's it's usually, you know, this is my number one screed now and tell me to stop if, 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 you, if, you, if you're just getting bored of it. But the number one person who's going to murder you is the person you're dating. So, you know, like, that's the person who's going to murder you if you're going to get murdered. So, like, a lot of times these things are, like, that's an incredibly complicated issue on its face. Is that yeah. I the, I 100% agree with you about it being incredibly complicated, which is why... So, but how can you want to have that, like, superhero kind of I, ending where we well, get one person or we don't? Because it never happens that way in real life. <laughs> that's not a fair, a fair thing to put on me. I never said anything about wanting a superhero type ending. I think I recall you saying, Alan, that you wanted, wanted Meryl Streep to you wanted <laughs> Meryl Streep to say, I am Iron Man, and then <laughs> falafels. Um, shawarma. Come on, Mike. Shawarma. Shawarma. No, I, I what? just think the open-endedness. So she, he semi-confesses to something. She lies to get that confession, right? She tells him, oh, I called your old nun. And he's like, well, I, you know, I can't, I can't explain everything, but you know, you're just going to have to trust me that it's not as bad as you think. And then he moves on, gets a new church, gets, essentially they say he gets a promotion. She, I believe is leaving, right? She, she had to, she was removed from the church. It was kind of vague. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember fully. It's, it's very, it's, it's very churchy kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, that like you, you you kind of I, re, I I would have to have even Googled it if I saw a description now. Like, is that a demotion or a promotion? Is that good? <laughs> you know, like it's very, it's very inner workings church stuff, and you never know. Yeah, you know. And so uh, basically, the the story ends with him being in a better position, her being in a worse position, and that was kind of the end, right? Like she went on this crusade that maybe she was wrong. 
he is possibly a pedophile, but he's, his life is going to be okay. And, it, and that's just the end. And I, I'm totally fine with these open-ended stories that well, make you is question. is it open-ended then? Wait, hold on. Hold on. Is it open-ended? Before, before you say the next thing, uh-huh. is it open-ended? Because yes, he's been moved away so. from, he's been moved away. Uh-huh. Well, let's think about who's in danger. He's been moved away from children. No. He's no longer in charge of a school. He, he is. He's as far the, as I remember. He's a principal of the school. He's a new pastor okay. and principal of a different place. Right. So he's moved away from the victim. Like, like in terms of the characters in the story, not in terms of fixing pedophile, pedophilia. Yeah. But he's moved away from, if we talk about our protagonist being safe at the end of it. Mm-hmm. It, it, it. He's moved, the monster has moved away from the boy and Meryl Streep. So the specific boy that's being, you know, pedophiled and Meryl Streep has moved away from him in the case that she's the monster. So if you look at just the protagonists, like, you know, what all I'm asking you to do is consider not necessarily a societal thing is to think of it as a horror thing. Like there's a monster that lives in a lake. Let's look at like, so, you know, the Lake Placid movies at the end of the movie. Do we kill the is the is the is the alligator dead in Lake Placid? That's up for debate. But the characters are separated from it. Like at the very least, looking is it a, is it any more open ended? Is what I'm saying than a horror movie. As, as a societal thing, maybe it's not open ended. You know, moving the priests around when they were pedophiles was unacceptable. But if you look at them as all monsters in a horror movie, our prote- our, our, our main characters are just as safe as they would be if they got out of the range of. I think you know a monster. I think a better example is a serial killer movie, right? Like you have a, a cop drama trying to hunt down a serial killer if that movie ends with the serial killer still being on the loose he's just left they can't find him they don't know what happened i think you would feel like oh yeah this is still open-ended this isn't closed this this story is not finished and that that's well, but, but maybe maybe if it's a parable for you know and by the way the, the movie doubt was originally called doubt a parable mm-hmm. so <laughs> you know we have to pull that pull that into here um is if it's about the Iraq war, then that fits like, you know, the, the, the powers that be are kind of shifting around. They're not necessarily, you know, uh, closed up. I would ask you to also consider the Joker. Uh, uh, you know, all that Batman ever does is lock the Joker up in Arkham Asylum and the Joker break finds his, his friends that are in there and breaks out. But somehow at the end, we, we consider that not open-ended. The joke, the Batman beat whatever plan was going on at the time, even though in reality, it's the same thing. The Joker is more powerful in Arkham. I, it, no, it would be if the Joker walked away with all the money and never went to prison, there was no consequences but, for, for the priest. I mean, is there, but, but I think that I'm going to stick with my Joker and my monster analogy. Yeah. No, that's fine. It's what, the monster what moves is, to what, another what town. What do they actually want? All the, if we look at the, the crime that they actually wanted, these monsters, fill, fill, uh, a pedophilic priest, mm. all they want is to hurt people. So yeah. uh, anything short of him, you know, being locked in a jail at the bottom of the, uh, the sea or killed. Yeah. Is an unsatisfying ending in, yes. in your terms is all I'm saying to consider is like that it's not quite based on reality, which the Joker is, I guess I'm saying. <laughs> all I'm saying is the Joker doesn't care about money. So long as the Joker is alive, he's going to get to torture people. And, you know, that's, 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 that's meaning that he, it's the monster I think works because it can neither win nor lose unless, of course, it's totally destroyed, unless it's killed. Which is a, a a pretty big line to cross in terms of reality and and a movie. Yeah, but most monsters do end up dying in horror movies. Some some end up, some end up dying. Dracula does not always die. Um, you know, uh, a lot of big monsters usually, um, if they're created by a scientist, a lot of times the scientist will live. Meaning that, of course, in the sequel. The, 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 the monster will be reanimated in a lot of ways. Um, a, a big theme with horror movies is that the monster isn't, doesn't follow conventional rules. Uh, so killing it on conventional terms doesn't work. It will, it will come back. You know, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon, the, these, 
uh, uh, another you know, Solomon Grundy to name another Batman villain that it, that they are um, they are stopped for now. Lord Voldemort is a great example that he's dead for now. Even in all of the Harry Potters, he dies in a couple of the movies. But yeah, of course, but, so he's, he's that dead is, for because killing them on conventional means doesn't work. Well. Also, the intention is he's going to come back for the next story. This this story is done. There's no there's no part two. <laughs> there could be doubt too. <laughs> if that was the case, if, if that <laughs> if that was the intention, then I'd be fine. Like I'd be like, okay, well, let's at least it's going to tie up, right? But my my well, ori- my original point was something all along the lines of pedophilia or rape or these things that are very visceral that like really you know attack you on a a deep level and when i say attack i mean just like affect you on a deep level when you watch it if you don't have a satisfying ending it's kind of abusive to watch well, or, or I think a lot of victims of, and I don't want to speak for victims yeah. of sexual abuse. I'm only speaking from the, uh, uh, side of looking at relating to something on screen. I think a lot of people would say, like, you know, uh, Platoon is a really great example of this. Mm-hmm. I listened to the audio commentary of Platoon recently. Boy, that's a fun time. It's just the whole movie is just Oliver Stone going, yeah, that, that happened. Somebody, one of, one of the guys in my, uh, in my troop. He shot a bunch of kids. Uh, and then next scene, he's like, yeah, that happened. A bunch of fellas in my troop, they raped a girl. He just keeps going. And it's like, that's, that movie's a great example to, to work with this one, especially since they are kind of about war, both of them in a way. And like for Oliver Stone making that movie, it was what he experienced. Mm-hmm. So if we look at doubt in terms of you saying, I want these things to happen. Well, everybody wants those things to happen, but even though it's a parable and it's not really about sexual abuse, but if we, if we look at the, I mean, the, it, it really the is sex abuse. <laughs> no, sexual I mean, abuse. I mean, well, okay, hold on, but let's, let's do this first. If it is about sexual abuse, which the, the writers have said it's not, but if it is about sexual abuse, uh, it, it, then on a surface that is level, what ha- on a surface level, it's a hundred percent about sexual abuse. Right. But, but with parables that it, they, they are often two things at once. So if we look at, um, it as a sexual abuse movie, victims of sexual abuse, especially in the Catholic church are going to say, yep, that's what happened. You know? Yeah. Yep. That's exactly what happened. And so why shouldn't they get an interpretation of this story that is true to life where, I mean, I think even a lot of victims of sexual abuse, Alan, what Meryl Streep did, who, uh, uh, you know, confronting someone like that. I think a lot of them are going to say, nobody even did that for me. Nobody, you know, nobody, uh, stepped up and, 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 and started accusing the person. And remember, even the kid, which I thought was very realistic, didn't really know a lot of what Meryl Streep was doing. They only, they, it, 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 in the movie, uh, it's kind of, it's another like fun gray area that I, makes you really uncomfortable. The mom and the kid, when actually asked about it, kind of don't lie. It's, it's not really clear that they're pushing things aside. It's very artfully acted and very, um, like well written that it doesn't come off as like a hackneyed thing where well, it's like yeah. Oh. So Meryl Streep confronts the mom and is like, "Hey, I think the priest is you know abusing your son." And she's like, "It's okay. He's only there until June." And she's like, "No, no, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I, I think there's something going on." She's like, "No, it's fine. Like it's only till June." And then she's like, "No, really, you need to listen to what I'm saying. I think something. I think the priest." is doing something bad against your son. And she's just like, I, he needs someone. His dad hates him. His dad thinks he's gay. Essentially, that's what she's saying. And he, he beats him because of that. And, you know, he hates him because of that. And so if this priest is, you know, showing positive attention to my son, then at least he's getting positive attention. I know he has bad motives and all this stuff, but at least my son is getting some care from somewhere. Yeah. And it, that's, that's the, the, the subtext too, is that like uh, in the story, the, 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 it, it actually kind of even clicks more than that. It clicks on both sides even more than that because there's a conflict with, uh, the kids, the kid being shirtless. And so when she says he's being beaten, it actually might make sense that, that the priest is like checking out wounds 
and tr- and like tr- is secretly treating the fact that he's being beaten up um unbeknownst to to, to everybody else you know like abusers do there, there's there's this this actually plants this small seed of doubt that again i didn't even mean to use it there that maybe um he's the hero that the abuser is yeah. at home and that he and that the abuser is a really good abuser as well that that he might not be this mastermind of getting away with things that like the dad is hitting the kid in his t-shirt which abusers will do you know so that it's covered up by shirts and things like that um and so there's this whole it's a really unclear scene and you don't know whether she actually believes that maybe he's a, a, a pedophile and she's okay with it or whether she's just trying to get rid of this pesky nun who who doesn't really like she just wants her out of the house like she doesn't like Meryl Streep she's not no one is welcomed as a hero in this movie ever no no and i i think you you're taking what i'm saying in the wrong way is I don't think it's a bad movie. I think it's really well done. I think it's really well acted. I think there's so much tension and so many layers to everyone's relationship with power dynamics and social dynamics and, you know, an accuser versus the accused and all this stuff. I think that's all great. It just wasn't satisfying at the end. And it's a little frustrating when it's such a heavy topic for it not to land. It's kind of a a frustrating ending. And I, I, I'm fully on board with them doing it. I'm not saying they shouldn't be allowed or that it shouldn't happen. It's just for me watching the movie and getting so invested and then it to be so open ended was like, Oh, I, I don't, I'm not. A so how do you, how do you generally feel about, well, let's, let's look at it a different way. How do you generally feel about cliffhangers? How do you feel about Shane in inception? Uh, these famous cliffhanger moments in uh, uh, Terminator has a few cliffhangers, but now at this point there are there are none. Um, <laughs> Terminator is a terrible example. Well, well, well they, some of the Terminators end with a cliffhanger, but because they've done so many, all those cliffhanger moments are kind of now uh, no. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, uh, Episode Five of Star Wars before you see Episode Six. How, how do you feel about? cliffhangers in movies are that is an okay ending it's an acceptable ending things would just end that way sometimes yeah I mean, and I, how do you how did you feel about inception is is a, is a good one i think to, to to focus on yeah i i think like i was saying i think that's fine i think having an open ending is fine depending on the subject matter when the subject matter is so if it's hitting you on such a visceral level i think it needs to have some type of resolution and not just be like, okay, you know, what do you, it's, it's up to you to kind of figure out what happened. Like that to me, that's, that's not a satisfying way to end. I'll say this. I am not what uh, a, I want to say this very loud and clear. Hello, Mike Fallick here, filmmaker, <laughs> bachelor of fine arts and film and television, violence in TV and violence in movies does not create violence in the real world. I if agree. that were the case, I would literally be the most violent person on earth and I'm possibly the least violent person on earth. Okay. So that's first of all. Yeah. But I wasn't saying that by the way, just the, no, 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 no. Oh, but what I want to throw out there is I think that there's a bit like we're, we're forcing people to say that some things are so much worse than others when like, there's murder movies, there's war movies that end this way, you know? And like, it's, it, I'm not saying you're so, saying this, but what I'm saying is like, is like, is pedophilia any better or worse than killing and murdering? Like, no, not but really it, a contest I want to judge, <laughs> but you know, it, it, but, as a, as a, a filmmaking tool, it is worse, right? You watch John Wick. But that's only you, because of the, the, you, the, 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 on, the you watch, typical stuff. You watch John Wick. You care way more about the puppy that got murdered than his wife. Or any of the people he kills, right? I think that's John Wick. John Wick Two, in my opinion, is the same ending to Doubt. Did you see John Wick Two? Yes. Yeah, and we talked about it. That that's is. The, oh, we did talk about John Wick Two. <laughs> but no, but so my point is that's the same ending. It's no, the no. same ending. <laughs> Hang on, the dog, right, is a, a filmmaking tool. Killing the dog is going to elicit emotions out of you, right? That that was the point. The reason why they brutally kill the dog. Is because you are attached to it and they know, okay, if we do this, then everything he's going to do is justified to the viewer. Him going through and killing, I think it was like over a hundred people in the first movie over the but dog. But is it because he just, he got a new dog in the second one? 
What? <laughs> Hang on. You're, you're getting, so was it you're that getting big distracted. Of a deal? You're getting distracted from my point. Is that the, 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 the device to elicit emotion from the audience, uh, pedophilia, rape, uh, children dying, dogs getting murdered, all these things that are unjust, uh, against innocence is definitely, uh, a, a heavy topic to play with. And I think if you use those and you don't end it, uh, with a satisfying way, you are, you are, it's, like I said, it's kind of abusive to your audience. But he doesn't, again, again, I think that, that like, you're getting confused by film conventions, which I think are a bit hackneyed. John Wick doesn't kill those guys because of the dog. John Wick is in danger. They kill his dog. John Wick is going to kill people no matter what. Like, the killings John Wick does in that movie actually have nothing to do with the dog. We just have another motivation to like John, who is a killer, and no. these other guys who are also killers. That's what he, I said. He, that, that's what I said. You know, though, what I'm saying is that it, it, it justifies the, the movie his is the same if the, the dog audience. doesn't exist. No, it's not. But if the dog doesn't exist, he's the same. It's the same movie. It's no. plot wise, it's the same movie. There's just one less kill. But not to the audience. R- right. That's so the point. The, 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 it's a it, it's a a way to elicit an emotion out of your audience, so that his his murder spree is justified. If they only broke in, beat him up, stole his car, and then he went and killed 130 people, people would not be as on board. They would not have such a, a release of like, yes, this is what they get. This is what they deserve. But because they murder the dog, people are like, yeah, finally, they get, they're getting what they deserve. I don't want to compare apples and oranges because clearly the, 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 but I'm, I'm gonna in a second is okay. what I'm saying. <laughs> so, but, uh, so, so we can continue the conversation, but just so people know my, my motives here. John Wick, both the series, are uh-huh. the greatest action movies being made. It's the best action, ongoing action series made to date. The, the action is not just good, it's revolutionary and, and beautiful in a way that nobody has done before. It's, uh, 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 that is what is to be appreciated about John Wick. It's this ridiculous level of violence that exists nowhere that is, you have to, it's like, there hasn't been a movie like it since the raid and raid two. It's, it continues that epic of just, uh, I mean, amazing action. Yeah. So that's, what's good about that movie. Let's ignore that for now and, and, and look at these story elements. What I would say to you is why deeper story and, and better stories that are not typical, which is the idea that there is a definitive end. So really stories that don't push, um, audiences because i don't want to say viewers or listeners or whatever or readers stories that push audiences to really be at a higher level often leave things to the interpretation of the the viewer without being obtuse so i'm not a fan of anything any of the story stuff jj abrams does because it's it's obtuse vagueness it isn't pushing you to be to, to interpret things in a real way, it's obtuse vagueness. He's, he's purposefully uh, vague about things without having an answer himself and without having really a reason for being obtuse. But when you create a story that legitimately, legitimately has mystery to it, you know, that's, that's when viewers can go back to it and wonder and, and, and do different things. You know, I actually think this movie is, speaking of horror, is closer to an Alfred Hitchcock movie where you don't really know what's going on for, for, for most of it. And then at the end, you might know, or, but you might be left in, in the dark. If you imagine John Wick in which they get rid of the dog scene and we don't know, wh- like imagine watching John Wick once and someone had cut out the dog scene for yep. you uh-huh. and then watching it again with the dog scene in it. Now those are two different movies. You're right because John is only likable because he likes this dog. He's a, an assassin. Yeah. He's, he's only fighting these people because they want to kill him because there's a bounty on his head. So, uh, if you make one without the dog and with the dog, what's great about a movie like Doubt and Alfred Hitchcock stuff is that that legitimate wonder, finding a story reason to leave something mysterious, that movie can be nine different movies when you watch it. You can watch it through one way and be like, okay, I'm going to watch this whole movie and pretend Meryl Streep is right, which you want, you want her to be right, right? Like, your initial reaction is to be like, Meryl Streep's right, like, fuck these pedophiles, they should all go away. 
Okay, cool. Now watch it the other way, where just as horrible as a, a, a child being molested, I, I would say, is someone being, uh, at least in terms of quality of life, someone being permanently incarcerated for being a, a pedophile. You know, those are those are lives ruined, essentially. So then watch it again from this other angle and say, no, Meryl Streep's wrong. She's this bad guy. Like, we all know people like her who decide they know something and they just keep on it and they're wrong and they stick their nose like into stuff and, and, and they don't, they don't want to to listen to facts and they don't realize how many people they're hurting. Well, now that's a, that's a totally different movie. And now Philip Seymour Hoffman's the victim or a third movie in which it's a little bit of everything where maybe the, the guy was a pedophile in the past and he has this mysterious past, but now he's not doing it. And, and maybe this kid, isn't, you know, being abused. And, and, you know, there's there's a hundred different ways you can slice it that are not unsatisfying and obtuse. They are legitimately interesting ways to think about life and your, and your perspective on things, which I think was his, his way of doing it, that there are plenty of movies where the pedophile goes to jail and the bad guy gets locked up. Well, you know, again, I, I don't necessarily think that had to be the ending. I don't think he needed to necessarily die or go to jail for it to be a satisfying ending. I think if they would have revealed to the audience the truth of the situation and everything could have ended the same way. Meryl Streep could have been having her doubts. He could have gone on and had a better life. All that stuff is fine. But to leave the question of like, oh, what happened up to the audience is kind of an unsatisfying way to do it. Like if they would have revealed that he I definitely disagree so badly, he definitely was a pedophile then at least it would have been a commentary on, yeah, like these things happen. People but, just get but okay. Let's around. do it. Let's do it now. Let's yeah. do it now. Uh-huh. Okay. You just finished the movie. Yep. Okay. Yeah. He's, a, uh, I'll just do it. He's not a pedophile. Okay. How do you feel about the movie? It's great. Okay. Let's do it again. Uh, he, 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 uh, he totally is a pedophile. He was molesting that kid. It's great. Okay. Well, what about this title screen? In reality, he had touched him like once or twice and then gone to see some therapy and like didn't do it again and felt bad and took care of the kid and was, was caring for him. But on the, di- on a couple of those days, he was thinking about diddling the kid. <laughs> I don't, I don't, that's the, right, end. you don't that's know. You don't know. No, well, no. That's what I'm saying is you want an answer, but the answer might be a lot more interesting and complicated and true to life than 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 what you want like what if that was the answer but this the isn't this like isn't this true to life this is <laughs> this is a, this is that, a, no my third answer my third answer was more true to life no like, that is I like was asking, the reality of pedophiles that so everything happens but the end pops up and just says what you said yeah they put diddle in there yeah yeah yeah. and then there's a bad movie yeah well, 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 well what i'm saying is <laughs> is is that that you you're wanting this and you wanting this answer is an effective device of it it's the same as saying it, it, it you're sort of ruining the effect of terror here it's a bit like watching i'm trying to think of a good movie where the person uh, let's uh, 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 oh, we're spoiling so many movies but um <laughs> silence of the lambs uh-huh. right at the end if it says and then hannibal lecter uh dies yeah. you know uh, it, my point is, is that lots of people leave horror movies and they go, Oh my gosh, I hope Hannibal Lecter doesn't, doesn't come to my house and eat me. Or, or I hope, I hope it doesn't crawl out from the sewers and steal me. Like you're trying to take away. No. That, like I, imagine at the end of your favorite horror movies, they were like, but don't worry, everyone. It's just a movie. Don't go home and be scared. Like that's the fun of it is being scared and being too scared to, 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 to turn the lights off when you're at home and, and, and running into your house. Like that's the effect of the movie. The effect is, you were left with this sense of like, Fuck, I want to know that everything's going to be okay, but you're not going to get that. That's the right that those filmmakers get to do yeah, because they, they I, built again, a world. I think it's it's completely fine that they did it. It's just not a satisfying way to end it. Like, uh, I think you're looking for a different sensation. If if we compare it to different other satisfying things, uh-huh. I think you're trying to say this pizza wasn't a good dessert. And I would agree with you. Pizza's, <laughs> no, I don't think pizza's that's... a pizza's a bad dessert, Alan. <laughs> I don't. But I don't all think I'm that's a fair is, comparison. This movie was a pizza, and no. it's going to be a pizza. Uh uh-uh. uh This movie, this movie again. I think using pedophilia to connect you to the story 
is effective, but if you don't tie it up, it's very unsatisfying. Okay. Let's, like the same uh, at with, some point we'll have to go into to it being a parable, but let's keep talking about this for now. I think the same with rape, right? If you have someone getting raped in a movie, it's really hard to land that movie. Like that's why you don't do it. It's because it's a really difficult thing to escape. And if you put it in and you don't acknowledge it, then it's a glaring thing in the viewer's face. And I feel like that's how this ended was just like it kind of uh almost lazy and like, well, we don't really know. We don't want to say anything too aggressive because maybe he is, maybe he isn't. And I, I feel like they just everything up until that point was so good. The acting was good. The story I think, was great. I think, he, I think the ending you're proposing is a little bit lazier, to be honest. To reveal I think the truth? That, yes, to, I think that. Like, I think it would be if they revealed that he is a pedophile and his life continued on and was great, it would have been a very difficult way to do it. But I think it would have been more satisfying. It's not about it being difficult. It's not about it being difficult. I think that. There is, there is a thing here with, with artistry where, where you have to leave negative space. And, and, and to say that they don't do something and making it lazy in terms of not making a choice, it actually takes, it, it, laziness is, is probably not the word I would use, but it takes a sophisticated artist like what's going on here to, to say, no, I don't need to, let's use painting as an example. I don't need to paint that corner. The blank space is, is what I want. Uh, and it won't feel empty because of what I've created around it. It takes restraint to not say, I need to do more. And, and that, and that's what this is, is, is in, ter- in my opinion, it's restraint. It's to say, mm-hmm. no, this is, this is leaving a negative space purposefully to create an effect on the audience. And, and it takes a higher artist to say, it takes a lower artist to, to, to cop out and say, and in the end, the, the Gungans win. Yay. Everyone trade big crystal balls. And the, like, and not that that, that's how that movie's supposed to end, but like, you know, like like Law and Order, they so, do episodes where you don't really know the, what happens at the end. You know, that, that, that's that's where that's where those episodes of Law and Order are great. Where it's like you think this legal system we have is is so black and white that it's yeah. like someone gets someone gets acquitted, someone gets uh, uh, thrown in jail. You know, and we know in Law and Order they usually give you all the facts. You know who did what, and who did. But there's great Law and Order episodes, some of the best ones where they're just like. Oh, the legal system can kind of make a situation in which everyone has all the facts and nobody wins and there's no real answer to it. And I think that redefining that, making an episode of Law and Order where you find a way logically for it to end open-endedly, even though we're in the legal system, which is like guilty, not guilty, right? That seems so cut and dry. Yeah. You, you know, it's not. A real-life version of it would be like... um uh, the, 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 the West Memphis Three, I don't know if you watch those movies, uh, on, on the theme of Christianity right now, which is, which is good and, and, and fake, did, and fake. Did you, did you, did you listen to Serial? The, uh, the yes. The, How did you first, feel the at the end season. of it? When they got I to don't, it. I don't, I don't want to give NPR any more credit than they deserve. Well, Let's how, instead talk how, about How did you West. feel, how did you feel at the end of Serial? When she said, you know, I, I have different, I don't interpreta- know. I have different interpretations. It was so unsatisfying, right? Right? Oh no! That, yeah, that guy killed that. That guy killed that girl. But um, but the it, ending it, of the the story was very unsatisfying, right? The way she's like, no. ah, you don't come on, Mike. You know you you're no, just, I, you're I didn't, just I didn't disagree it. because you know it'll give me uh no 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 no. no. I genuinely thought it was a good ending to it because that's that's what happens is that like he he that that, that that's the reality of it I think because I watch a lot of crime stuff mm-hmm. before serial I watch a lot of crime stuff yeah so. Maybe that's maybe that's part of it. Is that I, I'm not saying you're not educated, but I listen to a lot of stories about people's sexual abuse and things like that. And so I think when but I watched Doubt, especially not, in rewatching it recently, I was like, yeah, that's what can happen. And that's it's not satisfying or unsatisfying to me in any other way that that story's been told to me. Same with Serial. It's like, yeah, that's what happens. It's shitty. That's 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 the unsatisfying part. Is that yeah, we just throw this kid could be innocent. We throw people in jail all the time, and they're just innocent. And and sometimes it's dubious, and everybody did their part, and it, well, that's the way. That's so that wasn't unsatisfying to me because it's like I've heard a hundred stories like that in watching true crime stuff. It's like yeah, that's that's what happens. 
Yeah, but maybe he did, as, maybe as he didn't. A, as a story, though, it is an unsatisfying way. As a story telling, obviously, it's I did, I, I just, I towards true. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't I, feel I, like we're, I, we're getting anywhere with this conversation. We're I know, I know, going. we're not. I know, we're not. I know, we're not. But it, it, I want to list a better crime example because NPR can suck it. But um, <laughs> the, 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 do you know about the uh, the West Memphis uh, uh, three? No, they're they're they. It's a great series called, um, they made, they made, I think four of them on HBO. It's a documentary. I have to look it up so I can tell people to, 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 to look it up. Um, did you watch uh, the Jinx? No, I only watch good TV. Hold on. I'm looking for this. West Memphis. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what the, the Jinx the, is? Um, it's the, is doc- the Nick? No, no. The Jinx is the... Oh, the Jinx, the Jinx was, the Jinx was pretty good too. Okay, wait, hold on. Hold on. We're gonna, you remember we're the gonna, ending of that and when you felt like, oh, this was so satisfying? I don't find any less... Okay, so the <laughs> series they made on HBO about the West Memphis Three was called, was called Documentaries and But Paradise Lost. Okay, so, uh, uh, you should watch that in terms of like an unsatisfying crime thing. Because the first movie, just watch the first movie and see what you think. Watch the first movie of Paradise Lost, which is about, of course, it goes on this whole theme. These three kids who are wrongfully accused uh, of, of uh, whatchamacallit, of um, killing this young boy. because Mostly because they were Wiccans and they were kind of outcast kids. And mm-hmm. bad small town police work, which a lot of true crime is about. But this was a really revolutionary at the time. Um, and that movie makes all these assumptions and these accusations and you're left at the end of that movie going, oh shit, these kids are going to be in jail forever. And you don't know if they did it. Right. Uh And, and that, that to you by your same standards is an unsatisfying ending. Well, then as it turns out, HBO kicked up a bunch of dirt, uh, 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 metaphorically, uh, I guess, kicked up a bunch of dust and this case got attention and people, all of a sudden advocates were like, we, these kids are not guilty. We should get them out of jail. And the documentary became a part of it and there were at, and the second documentary is about finding all these different people doing it and they start pointing fingers at other people and, uh, uh, uh it focuses a lot on this, uh, dad of the victim who you're certain did it. And the second movie ends and it's still a satisfying ending of like, shit, like they, things might have gotten even worse and these, these kids, uh, uh, you know, they're gonna be in jail forever and it's still a great movie. And then there's a third movie in which you find out the ending of what happens to the West Memphis three kids, and I'll, and I'll ruin it here because I'm not giving any of the details away. You can still watch it. They get out of jail, but they get out of jail on the basis that they are not acquitted of their crimes, which is insane. So they get they are given a sentence of not guilty, but they have to also admit they did the crime. So it's this great ending to a movie that is not satisfying. The kids are, but, but in, in, in your standards, Alan, that the kids, because the, in, in the same version of the story, right? The, mm-hmm. it, the West Memphis three kids are out of jail, right? I see, I, but, you're, you're, but, but, but they're out of the way of the monsters, right? Which is jail. Their monster is jail. But we didn't get a definitive thing as to who did the crime. We didn't uh-huh. get a definitive thing as to who, who's the real killer. We didn't get a definitive thing as to whether the state knows they didn't do it or not. And so it's the, it's the same thing where real life is, is this. And Mm. I find that satisfying because it's a, it's a, it's, it's a satisfying ending to, to some, to some version of these people's lives that now, if this was a fictional story, how would you feel about that Mm. ending? Same, same exact way, because especially with, especially with the twists and turns and everything that are involved in it, which is, which is what doubt is really essentially another version of the West Memphis three. And it's, it's, it's a story of flipping perspectives and not knowing what to expect and, 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 and who did what. Um, but I, we aren't going to get anywhere in that way. No, we should talk about it as a parable sure. because it is, it is a parable. This story stuff we're arguing about is a parable. Did you know it was a parable when, when, when you watched it? That he was trying to commentate on the war. He was, he was, specifically this movie was made in, written in 2003 and mm-hmm. the play was performed in 2004. So at the time, a parable, if someone says they're making a play that's a parable, 
they're going to be talking about the, especially an American playwright. Uh, they're talking about 9-11. They're talking about George W. Bush. They're talking about the political climate of war at yeah. the time. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that would be ex- accepted. So, um, but he meant it as a commentary, not just on that. He said that was the inspiration for it, but it, how do you feel about it? Because now I think you'll have more answers. That feeling you're feeling right now, I think you'll have more answers when you consider his parable. His parable was about how we all have convictions and that it, 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 we can't let convictions dictate how we have conversations and investigate things. That, that we, that living, he wanted to encourage people to be in a state of doubt and be in a state of not knowing. So now how do you feel about the film in knowing that his purpose was to encourage that doubt is not a bad emotion? I don't think he landed that point. Oh, I, I disagree uh, again because, <laughs> because, uh, because his, his whole, again, I love this movie. Uh, yeah, I, I, so again, I'm, I'm I think stand the by. 95% of this movie is great. I think the ending does not match with the rest of the movie. Well, ignore the ending because, of course, that's not what it's. That's not the the purpose of it. Uh, the purpose of a parable, no, no, really good allegory parable. I don't know a good uh, Scarlet Letter. I hate the Scarlet Letter, but the Crucible and the Scarlet Letter, like those, don't really end. Those don't have good endings. But the point of those books, I hate both those plays. But um, the point of those because they're unsatisfying. That's weird. No, just because they're stupid and <laughs> they're, they're stupid and long and they're ridiculous <laughs> and their dialogue is terrible and it's it's all uh, especially the Crucible with that Jamaican character. It's, it's all ridiculous. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, I I will tell a story about that Jamaican character. When we read that in school, uh-huh. I had a teacher I didn't like, and I read in a very authentic Caribbean uh, pronunciation of things to make her think that I enjoyed her company and that I was participating in her class. And then the next day I, I did, uh, I read, you know, as we're reading a lot in class, I did it like a 1950s mid Atlantic kind of Fraser Crane newsman voice. Yeah. Uh, reading it like as fast as I could just, just to upset her. Um, but <laughs> the real point here is that the point of those move, those, uh, an allegory is never to have a satisfying ending. It's to make a point. It's to say we shouldn't be, you know, so what witch would you say the point of a time. movie is? Oh, what, what an interesting question. Um, you know, cinema is, uh, a, a lot of people don't really know this. Cinema is the youngest art form. Um, uh, moving pictures are far and away much younger than even art itself. Even um. when we get into kinet- kinetoscopes and things like that. The modern answer, Alan, from filmmakers would be, we don't know yet. Every other art form has about a thousand years on us. We don't know. We haven't even settled on a medium yet. Even modern paints, acrylic paints and oil paints have had about 500 years of modern use where we haven't really changed stretching a canvas and using oil colors and things like that. In the 19, when, during the space race, we discovered that we could get a lot more, uh, you know, different effects through, through chemicals and things like that through paint. But really for the most part, paint has been the same for 500 years. It, even if you don't count the, the, the other 500 years before that, that painting is a 10,000 year old activity that we know quite a bit about the art. And music has quite a great deal on, on filmmaking as well. Same with sculpture. These are ancient things that go back to the times of, of, of Babylon and the Egyptians. These go back. But, but before the modern age, they go to, 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 to BCE and uh, film has been around for a paltry 120 years. The answer to what a film is for and what a movie is for is we don't know. We well, don't know. To I this day, say, we don't know. No, no film expert would tell you that they know what it, the point of going to the movies is. I would say art, film, movies, all that stuff is to make you to question your reality, whether it's, is this thing okay? Is this thing right? It's to reflect what's going on in the world. I think good stuff. I think there's a lot of stuff, you know, Marvel movies and all that, all that stuff. That's just like to get people in the seats. That's not art. That's, that. that's just trying to make money for the most part, right? Like they're, they have the form, they're using it. It's the, uh, you know, copy and paste of a great painting. Like if you have a Mona Lisa in your house, 
you're not going to consider that to be great art. It's a, it's a, a copy of something that's great, right? In my typical contrarian way, I agree that I don't like the Marvel movies. I disagree with your assessment, but continue talking. And so this movie doesn't really leave you the room to question your reality. It, what it does, and you even mentioned it about how the ending was kind of heavy handed when she's like, I have so much doubt and all that stuff. That was the ending. The, the whole point of this movie was to make you feel like, Oh, I don't really know what's going on. I'm kind of uneasy about my uncertainty. The whole point of what I'm saying is that feeling, the feeling that he was going for is very unsatisfying. You watch it and you're like, yeah, okay, I, I, I don't really feel. So he did hit his mark is what you're saying is that yeah. he did hit the mark of saying a hundred percent, but it's still unsatisfying. It a, it's well, what he's trying to say is that there is a sort of, um, anti-religious a thing here, which is to say that doubt is the opposite of faith, right? Faith is to say, is to have a certainty about, about something. And of course, this is in the abstract terms. I sure. think someone could still, of course, Meryl Streep's character is the essence of doubt and she never questions this faith to her God. It's a separate issue from religion itself, but that using religion as a, as a parable here for the mind is, is, is what's, is what's going on is that He's saying if we're encouraged, not necessarily from the, the, the church, but we're encouraged in this world. Imagine the world is the, the, the church. We're encouraged to have faith and conviction, which doesn't really apply to modern day life, of course, that, that he is preaching while a church would preach for faith. He's saying, no, my movie preaches for doubt. My movie preaches for be in a state of unease, be in a, enjoy that state, learn to enjoy it. If, if you're not comfortable with it, the more comfortable you are with doubt in terms of questioning things, I think the more comfortable you get with that movie over time is that not to, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm saying, well, you're not a questioning analytical <laughs> mind, you know, but I think a lot of people, why well, I, I here's, here's it, the thing that I think we're getting hung up on is I agree with what you're saying. I don't see how you don't see that it's still unsatisfying. I think that you have to, well, just because he again, did what he intended, where, I think his intention was you, to be unsatisfying. That's the whole point of doubt. Like, I know. See, that's what he's saying. He's what he's saying. No, of he's doubt the emotion. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What he's saying to you, like if is, you were in is, a relationship, learn to enjoy that. And you weren't no, sure if your girlfriend he's loved saying, you, he's, you would not feel satisfied in that. But I've also had it, Alan, where people push relationships and they want to know how much you love them or if you love them and you don't know yourself and you lose relationships because you don't make a move when you were supposed to or you make a move when you it was, they, that person wasn't ready for it or the other person makes a move and, and you think, no, that's not what I want right, right now. I'm not, I'm not certain of that. What he's, you're only proving what he's saying. And this is why I think you're, you're, I think you're looking at, you may be looking at, and this is where I would want to ask about your sort of film history. You, you're looking at film. If we look at a film with a plot, you're actually uh -huh. looking at radio. You're looking at radio plays. For the most part, when we talk about film and saying the plot and the story and the hero and the things like that, you're mostly doing the Lone Ranger. If you go and you listen sure. to the Lone Ranger, that is mostly, or, or, or uh, the Maltese Falcon, you know, another famous radio thing. Uh, if you listen to those stories, that is mostly what you're echoing. Those were radio plays yeah. turned into, uh, uh, that's the plots you're talking about. To this day, the Marvel movies are doing The Lone Ranger, uh, the original radio series. But there's plenty of film artists, video artists, yeah. who make things to try to evoke other things within you. There are video I... artists who make videos <laughs> in order to make, in order to make you <laughs> nauseous, for example. Yeah. And, and that's, that's not, that's not to say, that's not them saying, okay, we can make people nauseous using film. It's an experiment that they've decided they, they can enact on. I don't think that this is something where he's trying to make you upset like that, where it's a filmmaker saying, I guarantee I can make you nauseous by, by, by watching this, this movie. I, I don't think he's trying to do that. What he's saying is a video artist is, if you look at him that way, is that he, I'm trying to get you to enjoy this other sensation 
and the movie is all about flipping and 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 and, and things like that. That it, you shouldn't be looking for the satisfaction you're looking for normally. Like you should be looking for this thing where you're like, I don't know what's going on. This is so much fun that I don't know. You know, that's that's the fun in it. it is is and I think it's because you don't see it as much in other movies that people will have the same reaction that you have, where it's like it's unsatisfying. But if there were more horror movies like this, where you didn't know what was going to happen next, and you didn't really know what was going to happen at the end, and it didn't matter because you were along for the ride, um, then you would. You would, over time, learn to like movies like this, if that was your bag. You know, there's plenty of people that don't like horror, because they just don't like to be scared. Because we've effectively learned to scare people. And I think that might be what's going on here. Is what, That's what I'm asking you to address, is that is it maybe that this is a genre you don't like, just like horror? Is that is that is this maybe his his thing to say this is a play about doubt? It's it's enjoying the sensation of doubt. Is it maybe just a genre that he's he's a subgenre he's created here that you might not like? No, I mean I, I've said it a bunch of times already, but the thing I don't like about it is that it elicits motions on a visceral level by playing with pedophilia that his intention was to make you question your certainty. And that's what he did. But by using pedophilia, it really is an unsatisfying way to end the movie because there's no resolution. I would, I would counter that you're, you're, you're limiting a filmmaker's toolbox. Let's not say filmmaker because this has nothing to do with shots and filmmaking. We're talking about the plot. Uh, the filmmaking is by the way, beautiful. Yes. It's a, an amazing, it's an amazing period piece. Um, it came out around the uh, uh, around the same years as 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 uh, what you call it as Mad Men, I think. Yeah, so that that's when Mad Men was like in season two or something. So they were in production at the same time. Um, it's just it really does feel like you're in the '60s. You never doubt it for a second. Just the the even even like the nuns um, uh, 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 outfits are. It's great filmmaking, so I don't want to say filmmaking. I, he, but as a storyteller, you're limiting you're limiting him because when no, we I'm tell not. stories, I, I when think we he tell intended. stories that we when we when we find a sort of thing, we start to tell stories where we find a genre, whether it's action or whether it's romance, we go extreme. You know, Romeo and Juliet, the two kids kill each other. Now that you've had that first romance, we can make romance movies where the two kids don't kill themselves. But when you start a genre, you have to let the – you know, if I were to say that right away, it's like, well, he did this ending where the, the two kids kill each other. It's ridiculous. Why does he need to have kids, 14-year-old kids killing themselves? That's a little extreme. Well, because he was inventing effectively the romance narrative, he needed to have the most extreme tools to use. He's inventing this feeling of doubt in filmmaking. If he didn't – if he was too subtle with it and you just left it being like – you know, okay, yeah, I didn't know what was going on, but I didn't give a shit, then you wouldn't care about the movie at all. That's not satisfying, Mike. I don't care is not satisfying. That's my point. Like there's I don't understand I, I don't understand the disconnect because I agree with everything you're saying. I agree that he's perfectly fine to do it. I agree that there's nothing wrong with him doing it, but it is not satisfying. If your intention is to make something uncomfortable, that does not equate satisfaction. As a viewer, but so does so does so does so does horror. Why does so right? many? Why do so many of the villains in horror movies die? So, but you, but why does? So why many, is there a hero who all, overcomes? A lot because of it's people, it's a satisfaction. They don't a, always do that. They don't not always, always but that, the though, majority Alan. of the time. The majority right. of the so time. This is a different type of genre you don't see as much. So what I'm saying is, a lot of people leave horror movies going. I am so fucking scared. And it's the same with spicy food. If we look at other arts, if we look at, at the culinary arts, you, there are people that just genuinely, they, they, I think you're just experiencing something that you, that you haven't experienced on another level, or maybe you have. There's people that, there's people that go, no, no, no I'm talking about, I'm not saying your, sati- your, your dissatisfaction is, is, is unwarranted. I think it's totally warranted. All I'm That's- asking you to do is to say, there's plenty of people who eat, who look at people eating spicy food, and they go, why would you do that? Your mouth hurts. You're sweating. That's a horrible sensation. The point of food is to get comfort. And people who eat spicy foods go, I just, I like, the, it's a little bit of pain. It's a little bit of pleasure. Like, I like it. I don't know. You don't, you don't understand it. That's okay. And even if on a 
on a certain level, you understand how to enjoy spicy foods. If you just don't like it, it's never satisfying. For me, the movie, I know you can't believe I'm saying it's totally satisfying. I'm the same way with scary movies. I can't see scary movies without someone else there. I don't understand how people could go alone to scary movies and get the shit scared out of them and not, and, 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 and enjoy that. Like, and there's people that won't see scary movies or won't see violent movies. You know, we don't even, we haven't even talked about that. There's lots of people who are like, I can't watch people be killed. It disturbs me. There's people that can't see, see things in, in, with animals. Like, there are, there are certain sensations that we elicit that are uncomfortable. Yeah. But that's what people go to the thing for. And I think that just this doubt, uh, ignoring the movie word, like the word doubt yeah. and not knowing what's going on is a genre that is not really used as much, except for when it is lazy and obfuscated in the case of something like the, the, the new Star Wars where there are no answers and nothing, nothing is really, uh, <laughs> yeah, they're being yeah. confusing for no reason. So, so there's a difference. You're yeah, looking at it, yeah. you're looking at it from, from one perspective. I think that there's a genre here of, that's the movie. This, this type of movie is a sensation you just don't enjoy. And you might, if there were, I can't think of a lot of other movies that you could go and watch this, you know, and have the same experience. The West Memphis Three probably is, is one that you could do, do that with, where it, it, the Paradise Lost, where you don't, really the point is the journey of, of doubting everything and, and, uh, doing, it's not scary. It's not horrible. It's doubt. You don't know what's up. Uh, uh, making a murderer would be another one. Those are documentaries. It's not about though. it. <laughs> that's the that's a huge. But difference. but in the end, narrative is narrative. It doesn't it doesn't matter. No, that, well, if you're telling if you're telling a true story, narrative. if you're telling a true story, you are confined to reality. There's right. a big difference. So there's a big. Uh, you are, you have well, to give a lot more. You can cut the movie. It's it's their reality. But let me say this: you can always cut a documentary. Uh, to, 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 to find, to make it the way you want. You could yes. easily use going, you could easily well, you go and making a murderer. You can't just and, say, and, and talk he turned to a into psych- an alien pilot. and flew off into the galaxy. Well, there, there are, there are no, there are no endings, you know, uh, uh, I know, I know, but that's a, a that's lot of anime series. Of that holding true to reality. You can't just say, uh, the guy from. I'm just giving you, I'm just giving you <laughs> another movie where, I'm just trying to give you another movie where the sensation is doubt. I'm I understand. Not and I'm that, saying that I, documentary I, I, is, is a different thing than this. And what I'm saying, and why, and why I'm saying this is such a brilliant thing of satisfaction is that there are no other, that this person created something using fiction that you might really only can get from non, non-fiction. That he created this world of uh, changing circumstances that was not like a detective novel where the person hunts down the wrong guy and then it turns out it's somebody else and then it turns, you know, See, it, I, he I, created genuine doubt that, that, that I think is the sensation that, 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 that maybe you're just not used to as a, as a, an audience member and not to say that you'll like it eventually, but just simply that it's, it's a satisfying genre that, that maybe you just don't like. Okay. Going, you know, going, like spicy food. Going back to your spicy food analogy. If you hate spicy food and you ate spicy food, would that be satisfying? No, but you're okay. sort of seems so, to be pretending that, pretending. that everyone who eats spicy food no. is not, is not enjoying it. That inherently spicy no. food isn't satisfying. When, when, when did I ever put forward that idea? You've, cause you're you saying, taken, is it satisfying it, if you don't know the ending? No, I said for me the ending was not satisfying. Yeah, I I think I think. And you've been telling you watch, me how I'm wrong because he he intended to make me feel that way, and I was just like, yeah, but it doesn't mean it's satisfying. Yeah, I think you could enjoy this. I think it could be satisfying. I think I think, and my only point is this: is that I think if there were more genres, mm-hmm. if there were more movies that went down this genre. You would, you would be satisfied by it. In the same way that people who eat spicy food eventually do like spicy food and, and, and things like that, 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 that there is a way to enjoy this, this, this genre. But you can't, I was more, off- I was more not offended, but I was more taking the point of you saying, well, how can he use pedophilia and not land that plane? I was like, he needs the, we, when you make, especially something that's a new genre, you have to use the strongest tools. You have to go over what we what we call in story writing the the, the primal urges, yeah. you know, uh, sex, 
uh, survival, vengeance, these things that, that we, we understand inherently, safety, uh, children. These are the things that people, uh, they get, they get very upset about. And so yeah. if you're going to make a point, you, you, you take away one of their biggest tools. That's why I don't like the Marvel movies, which is that they wantonly use violence and don't, don't take it precious. I don't like anything Disney's doing right now because, because violence seems to be just something that you're allowed to do. Nobody takes any, any, any recourse for it. On a filmmaking level, why I dis- disagree with your thing on the the Marvel movies is it is good filmmaking. The films are are pretty at times. The the, the action times. is oh the, the action is okay. Yeah, uh, the action uh, the action is not very good. No, it's not very good. No, no, no. I, I said okay, but the 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 the, the, the CGI. But the, you're disagreeing with me. Is was your your stance, and you're agreeing my stance, with my everything stance you're, is saying. That you're saying. That my stance is that it's not it's not lazy filmmaking. I think lazy is a word. I, formulaic is lazy. Well, I would say that one department is being lazy, and that would be the screenwriters. Um, I would not say that the choreography else is being lazy. has been pretty bad. Uh, yeah, but I would I would think that the, one of the problems there is that they 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 did do a lot of scenes without stunt people, um, and that's the that's the problem is that Hayden Christensen and and uh, Ewan McGregor were uh, trained amazing amounts of hours. And those sword fighting scenes, I've said it before, are the best in sword fighting movie history. Um, you know, some, yeah. you take that well, chance like, with an actor, so like, they if might you compare, not be good at that. If you compare John Wick to Black Panther, right? I didn't see, but I don't, wa- I don't watch any more Disney movies. I'm done with Disney. Okay. But, but yeah. The point still stands. Uh, Black Panther was pretty generic action fighting. You know the the scenes, the hand to hand stuff, where it's it's not quite shaky cam, but everything's happening on the edge of the frame, and they're cutting really quick and just trying to show impact with the way they edit it. Versus John Wick, where they spend the time to build out his ability to do the fight scenes, to choreograph, uh, do the choreography in a way that works on screen. You know, it's like this showcase yeah. of action, of of fighting, of hand to hand stuff. Where and part of that is. Is that uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, the, the Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves. During the production of The Matrix, very much was like inspired by it and said, "Like I am now an action star." And he studied. He is through the years. He is, even though he's American, he is one of the you know most in shape, most skilled action star, like kung fu action stars in the world. He's earned. You know the, these things that he does. He's yeah. he's really really good. He's not just some guy who who gets who gets hooked up to these machines and then a stunt double comes in. He he really trained. He really worked hard at it. You know, after the first Matrix, he took that as his. And that movie was made what 10, 15 years ago at this point. Matrix. Uh, John Wick. Yeah, John uh, the Matrix. Yeah, yeah. It's been a while. So, so you've been spending. His but, prime of life training. But, these these other movies want fresh faces, and it doesn't work. They want muscles, and and that works for a comic book look. But it's never gonna. You're not gonna impress me with the choreography. Yeah, that's that you know? was my point. Was that they are they're spending five to ten minutes on these guys who are not showcasing ability. It's like you watch a yeah. a, a David Blaine magic special, and you're like, oh well, I know that they're just using editing tricks. To make this look impressive, it's not impressive, and especially where the focus of their movies just seems to be everything solved with violence. Well, then if that's the case, shouldn't the violence be the most important part? And what I'm saying, why I don't think it's lazy, is because again, this is this is my difference between the public's perception and what what I I think of with filmmaking is the things that they actually spend money on. You know, they buy actors. In order to do press junkets, that's a big thing for, yeah. for for Disney and these big things is that they buy very good looking actors who are very charismatic so that they can these shows and, and press it and that you want to so good are these actors and these in conjunction with these press companies that people will start to blame actors for things that happen in a movie when if you've ever made a movie, the actor is the last person with any decision as to what goes down in a movie. They show up there. They have almost no input They're They're very high paid figureheads. Which is their job. Yeah. They, they, they wouldn't deny that that's their job. But so good are some of these high priced actors that you get tricked into thinking this is their, that they wrote it. I remember as a very young kid, I thought that they, the, they, the actors were that funny. And then, you know, I mean, I'm talking like 
five or six and then I learned, you know, oh no, somebody else wrote it for them. That's how good these actors are that even you forget at times that, oh no, they're not this person. They're someone else wrote this. So the, the reason that I, I, I don't think it, it's, it's necessarily lazy and formulaic is because the CGI does keep, they do keep pushing themselves with environments and textures and, and, and not as much anymore, honestly. They are, they are slowing down. You should go not, see Black Panther. That <laughs> it was awful. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to see any. I don't. I'm not going to give them my money. Why would I give them my money? Go that. Go. Uh, I'm not, <laughs> go to a department store. I'm not going to play in it. Yeah. Oh God. No. I, that's like that's a Sophie's choice right there. Do I have to spend time in a Best Buy or watch a Disney movie? It's like, <laughs> but neither. Please, neither. Please, can I just not be in a can world? Can I just where kill I have both my kids, please? Yeah, please. Let's all. Can we all kill ourselves? I think she does think of this. Another Meryl Streep movie. I think she does at one point think about that. I think that was, or maybe in the book, that might not be in the movie. In the book, I think she's like, well, what if we just all die? Uh, but uh, uh, to lighten things up with Sophie's choice, it's just. I think that like. <laughs> The problem, the problem, the problem is, is that there are a lot of people in, involved and the things that outwardly, again, it's a thing of like, it, it's just the Lone Ranger. The thing outwardly we're getting tricked by is like, and again, I'm not talking about you specifically or saying what's satisfying to you. I'm talking about everyone at large is, is, is the thing that is tricking people is like that this plot is what is important. I have a problem with movie show, with movie stuff like where it, you, you need to watch a movie at least four times to understand all of it. You need to be pausing a movie. Like one of the problems I have with quote unquote film criticism, which mm-hmm. this show isn't, this is, this is a, we're just talking about movies. Yeah. Um, it, it, sometimes people will call themselves film critics when they went and saw it in a theater. And of course, any real critic gets sent a screener copy, not because they're connected, but because if you're going to analyze a frame, you need to look at every single part of the frame. You need to see what's been included on here. How, what's in, what's in the background? I need to take a chance to study it. The average shot in a movie is three seconds. So to say that you saw a movie in a theater and you fully understand the filmmaking behind it is, is where I'm drawing that line with the Marvel movies is that the money they're putting into this thing, a lot of it is in effects. Yeah. For the most part, these are people on, pretty people on stage. In, I mean, Black Panther is a great one because there was a lot of behind the scenes um, social media taking because it was such a big cast. Yeah, you just look at that set; they're never anywhere. No, it's awful. They, the every single thing. behind is blue. It's just blue. Which <laughs> you, you you say to yourself like, well, well, yeah. That, so so you know these these actors they they they're just sort of set pieces. Yeah, they are. And so the money is going into CGI. So it sort of discounts the 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 underpaid, not underpaid, but the under uh, shown heroes, which are animators, um, who really are the stars of these movies. Well, yeah, the that, people acting that's what, in these movies are the, are the animators. That's what I've been saying. The, I don't understand why we don't consider them to be closer to anime or cartoons. Like, I don't understand why there's such yeah. a big difference between, you know, Black Panther or Iron Man or any of that Spider Man versus an an anime. Like, they're pretty close in terms of. Stuff on screen, actually, because a common technique in anime is to uh, take photographs of cities. A lot mm. of cityscapes and backgrounds are photographs and then ran through uh, a, a huge amount of processing yeah. to make it look cartoony. That's a common technique yeah. for a- anime and manga or simply tracing over a city. So when you actually look at the amount of live action in an anime and the amount of live action in some of these big CGI movies, yeah, they, they, they are cartoons. If anything, it goes back to that thing of, of wanting to feel like this, this great Hollywood promotional trick, which, which really does make you feel good when it works, which is that these real people are like people you know and, and, and that they're relatable and they're stars and they're doing these things. But Iron Man is always CGI whenever yeah. he's doing anything. They don't even like lift him on rigs a lot of the time unless he has, he has his mask off. So any when they put those masks on, for the most part, it's a CGI character. Yeah. You know, and even then, a lot of these guys are, are are CGI. There is no difference between animation and things and things like that. It's this small distinction that 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 Hollywood wants to to throw out for itself. These are not as good as as animes. You know, we're we're going through another anime revolution right now, but 
it's it's um the 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 problem is the problem is the the, the price scale. I don't know. I mean, anime is big Hollywood too. Even your least favorite anime is probably a lot more high budgeted than people want to admit. Oh yeah, because of how much drawing goes involved, millions of dollars yeah. for any animated series. I, I mean, it, it costs a lot to make to make that that stuff, and they're just as lazy. They they're just as lazy in terms of these in terms of screenwriting in terms of uh, of all this stuff. But we're not a. Uh, it actually ties together really nicely that you 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 also don't enjoy those movies because of course. A lot of them are made. So actually what ends up happening over time, because you're used to the genre, is you just enjoy more of it. Yeah. And that's why George Lucas made Star Wars, was because there was this genre of, of uh, uh, serials. They just made tons and tons of sci-fi stuff. And we're, we're, we're back in that, ironically, we're back <laughs> in the era that Lucas was mocking. We've come full circle, that now... Hollywood bought a, a, a genre, a, a movie series, Star Wars, which is meant to mock an era of making too much sci-fi, but at the same time saying, well, we could have done it better if they weren't cranking them out all the time. And then ironically, we are now back there. They've gone completely full full circle, and, and I think they would admit that as as well. Um, how much did you pay to see Black Panther? Uh, $3. God damn. See, it's not that hard of a choice when you live out there. <laughs> I would see. I would. See, I gotta pay like fifteen dollars to see to see that thing. I do not want them to have that money. Yeah, I just it, don't. That's so much money. The it's it's insane to me the reception it got, and I know why, and I get it, and I'm I'm completely on board for the representation idea, but the movie should be better, right? If you're gonna talk about oh, this movie is so important culturally and society societally. And, and you know what though? It is because, because for me, like, if, like, like people always get up in arms when they, when they, they choose one side or the other. And they should. People should be, should want racial versions of themselves in the screen. Yeah. But Thor is a great example. Thor, Thor is a great example. Thor is not a f- real person. He can be whatever race you want. He can be f-ing green. He's a god from a, a, another world. You can make him whatever race you want. But, you know, him being blonde has to do with him being, you know, Nordic and things like that. And if you actually worship Thor, you'd be offended by the whole movie. So nobody, nobody is going to be really upset. You could have just made Thor black in the first one. They made Heimdall black. You know, like, it, 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 it's, it's important in that way that, yeah, you should be making black people. I don't understand why the, every single person in the movie, they're all fake. They're all fake. I don't understand why every actor isn't black. I don't, I don't understand why every actor, why there is a single white actor. It doesn't matter. None of them are, are real people. It's more strange to me to see that there's any other movies where they're like, we need, well, it has to be a white person. Why? Who cares? It's a fucking, he's, his name is Spider-Man. He can be whatever race we want. He's called Spider-Man. Like it, it doesn't matter. It's very, it's very odd in that way to see like, people up in arms it's weird it's it's great to see that people are happy about it yeah it's even weirder to me to see that it hasn't happened sooner but that doesn't mean that it can be both like this movie doubt can be an important movie because it it stood up it was being played in new york city it's as an anti not just catholic church but anti uh war movie in 2003 (laughs) give me a whip mic (laughs) I thought you were talking That's Spider-Man it. and Thor, and then you jump right back well, into well, doubt. Well, 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 what I'm saying is it can be it, – doubt can be both. Is that like it can, it, it is an important movie in terms of like that play and, and being bold enough to stay in New York City, which I don't know if people know. I mean that's, that's where I lived when, when that uh, – you know, during, during 2003, I'm from the New York area. Is to say to, – to, to say stuff like that was – I mean, it was, it was not an easy thing to say in that city. People were very sensitive for, for years. When he was doing this play, they were throwing people out of Yankee Stadium because uh, one man got thrown out because he didn't take his hat off during, uh, God bless America, not even the national anthem. So, uh, it was a very hard time to be able to do that. But at the same time, I have no problem with you saying like, yeah, but I didn't really like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that was kind of <laughs> my initial thesis was, I think this movie is great. I think everything that they did was great. It left me unsatisfied because it hit me on such a visceral level 
from the the storytelling elements that they used. Well, which 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 I think again, I haven't said, seen Black Panther, but I think the same applies. Is there is this visceral thing that is going to hit anyone who has had slavery in their family's past, yeah, and anyone who has any ties to and we all have ties to, to 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 black people and anyone that can feel anything about this idea especially when that's brought up for some people no matter what it is even if it is as as silly as a character named black panther it it's going to hit it's going to hit home you know and yeah. that movie is not silly to a lot of people and and and, and right and rightfully so i on the other hand am not you know I am coming at doubt from a totally different angle. It's not hitting me on this on this edge of like pedophilia should be conquered. It's not even hitting me on this thing of this war thing. I'm actually why I'm so up in arms about it is because I am enjoying the exact sensation you're saying you don't enjoy. The the only thing I like about that movie is how confusing and un uh, unanswered all the questions are in it. That's the only reason I like it. So I I, you know, I enjoyed all that until the end. I was on board for all of the uncertainty, all of the doubt, but when it just, it just kind of continued, it was like, oh, okay, that's, you know, I, I don't here's, feel complete in this story. Here's, here's, here's what I'll say for that. Like for me, in terms of, I'll, I'll show you how dedicated I am to unsatisfying this. Go watch this movie, by the way, so that you can understand, like stop the show and go listen to <laughs> this and then come back and hear the thing. This is great. There's the same speech in, in the, I don't know if it's as powerful in the play as it is in, in the movie, but it's very purposeful that, that you're sort of not understanding what's going on. And, and Philip Seymour Hoffman is not really flexing his, his acting for a certain amount of this. He's sort of a background character and he, you actually suspect for a large amount of the uh, beginning of the movie that he is, is a, a token role here that he's going to be. Uh, a, a sort of this bad guy in the background and that the movie is going to be this typical her investigating and working around him. And then there's this sermon right smack in the middle of the movie where um, Philip Seymour Hoffman talks about – this is where the, 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 the doubt comes from. Yeah, this gossip. Big speech. He talks about gossip and he talks about this, this speech about – uh, this woman comes to her about – she hears something about a friend of hers and she wants to tell somebody else. And he, the priest tells her, go up onto, uh, go up onto your roof and cut open one of your, your, your pillows and see what happens. She comes back and she says, and he says, what happened to you? He goes, there were feathers everywhere, father. Feathers just went everywhere. And he, and he, he, he says, that's gossip. And it's, yeah. So me, he, he says, go, go collect all those feathers. And she's like, well, that's impossible. Yeah. And he's like, that's what gossip does. For me, if the movie ends there where you have no idea what the real thing is, I'm just as okay with that being the end of the movie. Like that's I, how much I enjoy the 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 un the unceremoniousness of of uh, the answers given. I, that at that moment you're so certain you you're so uncertain of both of them. I agree. I agree that would have been a better ending. Had that been the ending, I would have been way more on board with. But but but. I don't know. You have to respect that it ends in a it, it ends in sort of a peaceful room and no, nobody's around and everybody's gone and it's just two people. It, you, 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 it's creepy in a way. It, it is the it yeah. is the same as as Inception <laughs> ending on. It's the same as Inception ending on the 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 the, the, the top the, the little tum the top. Yeah, thank you. I was not going to get that word for another two years. <laughs> on ending on the top as opposed to Star Wars ending with an award ceremony. It's like. You got to both, both are bad how though. That movie ends. I don't like either of those. Well, ideas. no, the the prequels, the award ceremony. Those. Well, yeah, that's a little bit of Nazi war film stuff. It's a little <laughs> creepy, but that's it. Like, you ever seen the movie? Which movie? Uh, that's fr uh, George Lucas took the uh, episode four award ceremony scene from Lenny Re Riefenstahl, oh, okay. the famous no, no, no. Nazi filmmaker <laughs> that okay. it's like a shot for shot um remake of a lenny riefenstahl scene i have not so, seen that movie we yeah, not a lot of people have seen the work of nazi filmmaker lenny riefenstahl <laughs> the only real reason i know about it is because someone said to me as a young filmmaker yeah that's lenny Re that's a nazi film that he did at the end of that and so then i watched it and by jove if it is really the same scene <laughs> 
Uh, I have no doubt. This was this was fun talking about this. It's a weird movie, though, right? Are you yeah. glad I told you about it at the very least? No, yeah, I I I think this is a really good movie. I just yeah. you're just not you're just not gonna. I don't know if he's done anything since the because the director the like, writer of the film it felt like a lot of foreplay movie. with no movies. <laughs> That's a good way to say. It. Did you see that? At least it wasn't like the post. Did you see that? That was Meryl Streep's latest. No, I did not see that. Yeah, that's the same movie. Go see the post, and then you'll be like, "Oh, there are worse ways to make movies in which nothing, ha- in which nothing happens." And that's the post. The post was, "Oh boy, that was bad." I, I openly laughed in the theater at the post. It's I, not a comedy. I think my my not frustration, but my un- dissatisfaction with this movie was because I enjoyed it so much up until the end. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got it. You got to respect that. It's, I don't know, like, like, I, I get what you're saying. Mm. I get what you're saying, but it's like, you, you can't not, you, you can't also not see that coming too. You, you, you can't, you can't look at well, a movie where it's like doubt. I, what I thought was going to happen, the ending I expected, do you, I don't know if you, if, if you watched it recently or not, but at, towards the end, right after the, the scene they're talking and he decides to leave, there's a, a clip of, uh, someone pulling out a Christmas tree, which kind of seemed out of nowhere. But I thought it was going to be him, and I was certain that the black kid's dad was going to murder him in that that alleyway. That's what I saw coming, but that never happened. Oh yeah! Oh wow! Yeah, no, I did not. I did not remember that tension at all. There's so many moments. Is the thing about it. the thing about it is, even if I had watched it today, it's is so many moments like that where you're like, oh my god, what's going to happen? Oh, like like. That's the thing too, is he keeps letting you down. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, that, that's what I'm trying to say about, about the ending is like, every time there's a moment like that, like, when I was certain, that, that scene stuck with me when she, when she confronts the, the mother. Yeah. It's like, I was certain this, this woman's gonna break out and be like, Gee, I had no idea, like, he's touching my kid, that's, oh, that's horrible, I, I didn't know, or, or, you know, or she's gonna be like, I know, I don't know what to do, help me, like, we're powerless. And the idea that he just keeps letting you down and you keep expecting it, all I'm saying about the ending is, is like, so that scene is super unceremonious for people that haven't seen the movie. It's just very like, like we described it before. It's just very like, ah, oh, nothing's really happening here. Yeah. So I, all I'm saying is you can't fault him for doing that ending because he did that a thousand times during the movie. He just kept being like, is something going to happen? Like, no, we don't know. Like, I'm going to keep. And so you can't necessarily hate the ending because he, he did that the whole time. Well, I, I think. Again, I, and you I, liked it those times, assumingly. Well, I yeah, because you it's building towards something, right? That's I guess, how. I guess that's true. And so you're like on board, on board, and then it's like, oh wait, no, this is just going nowhere. Type of uh, the emotion. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's no. I think that even if I didn't like, if I if I even if I didn't like the ending, even if I was like, I don't like the, this this um, I'm waiting for this thing at the end. I still don't. I still think that. I didn't feel, I guess that's what I'm trying to ask you is, did you feel during the middle of it that it was going nowhere? Like, no, no, I felt like in the middle, I felt yeah. like it was going, like, it's kind of like taking a really uncomfortable ride to somewhere you really want to be, right? So you're okay with all the uncomfortableness because you're going to end up somewhere you want to be. And then you find out that place is just closed. It's like vacation, right? You get to Wally World and it's not open and you're just like, oh, that was not, not worth all this uncomfortableness. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's, and it's, I, I, again, I think his intention, the filmmaker's intention, the screenwriter's intention, he hit it. He landed exactly what he was trying to do. Just for me, I did not, I did not find it worth the emotional stress going through all of it. Let me pitch it to you this way. It's <laughs> a pedof- it's a pedophile about nothing. <laughs> He just, <laughs> and I hate he just, so. it's a, it's a pedophile <laughs> about nothing. He doesn't do anything. That's what he does. You, you know how you and I, we're at, we're being pedophiles here at the diner. That's an episode. <laughs> have you thought of doubt as the pedophilic version of Seinfeld? I have not. I'll go rewatch it. <laughs> well, consider it then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, if anyone is still listening, I would love to know what your guys' thoughts are. On doubt. I think that a lot of people probably haven't seen it. I'm very interested yeah. to see if people have even seen th- this movie because it was such a, I'm such a fan of his 
And, and Meryl Streep is my favorite actor of all time. And this was just, uh, I, I, I'm surprised more people don't know it, especially since he so uh, sadly died. Yeah. He, I, think this, I think this would be one more people knew. I, there's, I mean, he's great in everything. Like he's even good in the Hunger Games. He's good in Mission Impossible. Like I have a great Philip Seymour Hoffman behind the scenes story about Hunger Games. Um, he, when he would do his lines, like if you watch uh, 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 Plutarch in those movies, he seems very calm and confident and jovial. Yeah. But when he was doing his side, this is how brilliant Philip Seymour Hoffman was. When he was doing his sides mm-hmm. um, off camera, when he wasn't mic'd, he would do them really aggressively. So that because Plutarch was such this figure of power, like all the other actors – when you see their responses yeah. are responding to him in like reverence and sort of scared, but then they cut back to him and he's like, yeah, she'll go there. But then when, when they would do it, he would be like, you know, Katniss has to do these things. <laughs> and like that's, so all of the reactions of the other actors are really scared of Philip Seymour Hoffman. Yeah. But he, when he was on, when he was on his sides, he would play it like super cool. Like, like even in those, that's why certain actors are just so good. It's like, and that is the sad part about these big budget movies is like, you can bring a really sophisticated level of acting to even something like Hunger Games. Yeah. Which he, he, even he was doing. He was like, no, you can, let's do, let's work at it. Yeah. I, I think that movie just failed on deciding who was the lead. Katniss is the well, it's worst. A, it, have you read, you've read the books. I yeah, think I've we talked about books, this. Yeah. The, the, we talked about it on Twitter, not on the air. So, yeah. so, so the, the, the books are about inner narration. Yes. The books are so they, much better. It needs a Blade Runner remake where someone just reads in, like you get Jennifer Lawrence, like in 10 years from now to read in, uh, her narration of what she's thinking and do a version of it like Blade Runner with like voiceover because that's the joy of the book is that she's doing the opposite on screen. Yeah. Than what she wants to do. Well, I think they try uh, putting forward her uncertainty on screen. And that's all you really get from her character. You know, like in the book, she's uncertain, but she's collected in her actions. And the movie, yeah. she's only uncertain. They're like, this is what we want you to feel about her. And she's just like kind of pathetic throughout. And when she yeah, overcomes the books are her, hilarious. It, it doesn't add up. Right. But uh, The books are like a funny recollection of teenage years. Anyway, Philip Seymour Hoffman's great. Yeah. <laughs> so how can people find your podcast, Mike? Uh, I'm on Twitter. Let's start a cold podcast. Big weasel, little weasel. I try not to do too many plugs. That's not what you came here for. You came here for yelling about pedophiles, and it's what you got. <laughs> you can get it everywhere, right? Anywhere you don't. Have uh, it. We are every. We are on iTunes, and we are on most other podcasters. I'm not on Stitcher or any ad or Anchor or anybody that sells ads over your podcast without paying you. Gotcha. Uh, but iTunes. Go to iTunes. Yeah. Go on iTunes. Good. Here's what you do. If you want to listen to my podcast, you see your droid and your, you see your, 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 your Google phone, your droid, throw it in the toilet. Okay. <laughs> don't even, don't even flush it. So that every day is the sloop just runs over it. Okay. Go get an iPhone, download iTunes and listen to it there. That's the only real way to do it. Or on like every other podcatcher, but I would prefer you put your phone in the toilet. <laughs> just droids though, right? Just Android phones. How do you feel about Windows yeah, yeah. phones? You put it, do they get do they get the the Apple iTunes I no podcast idea. app? I don't know. Put them in it. the toilet. <laughs> throw them in the throw them in the trash. They not even not even if they're yours. Just, just throw them out. But uh, yeah, you can find us pretty much anywhere you look, and uh, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook. And Taylor and I will be back uh, on Saturday with the Hunger Games Mockingjay Part Two. We'll finally finish up that series. That's nice. very, that's very exciting. Yeah. Very, very exciting. All right. Well, thanks again, Mike. Thank you.